now, please mute yourselves and you'll have uh, a chance to ask your questions at the end. You can also put them in the chat box as we go along. So welcome everybody to the community meeting for Trinity Boulevard phase one, Interstate 820 to Salado Trail. I'm Renat Rakhani. I am the city project manager from the Transportation and Public Works Department. Uh, I'd also like to give a warm welcome to Councilwoman Gina Bivens from Council District 5. Uh, Councilwoman, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, just briefly, and I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their morning for for this meeting, and I think it's very important, although it only impacts a few households, just under a couple of dozen, but it's important that you all know what's going on. And I think we're gonna be made the better for it. And Trinity Boulevard is gonna be just fabulous. So thank you for including me. I'm in two or three meetings at the same time, so you'll see me dart in and out. Okay, great, thank you. And I agree with what you said. <laughs> So as I mentioned, my name is Renak Rikani. This is my contact information, uh, my email and my cell phone number if you need to get in contact with me with any questions about the project, whether it be now or later on down the line. Um, this is how you can contact me and you know this presentation will be provided for you later uh, so you have this contact information. I'd also like to introduce our design consult consultant, Trenton Tidwell from Kimley Horn and Associates. There are a few other team members on the line as well that may chime in during our uh, question and answer session. So this is the outline for today. Some of the things that we're gonna be talking about, uh, we'll start with the project overview. Then we will be talking about future phases um, later on down the line. And then we'll go into ongoing activities. So things that we're currently working on on the project. Then we'll touch on the schedule. And then finally, you'll have a chance to ask your questions at the end. And we'll also be answering the questions from the chat box. So the project limits uh, run from Interstate 820, which is here, and um, down Trinity Boulevard, just east of Salado Trail. This is Salado Trail here. So currently Trinity Boulevard is a four lane undivided street located in a floodplain uh, with roadside ditches that carry stormwater. This leads to a lot of flooding issues as I'm sure you're all aware of. And that's one of the biggest issues that the project is trying to address. So the scope of the project is a concrete four lane divided roadway raised out of the, out of the floodplain. There will also be um, shared use shared use paths on both sides of the roadway that'll be about 10 to 12 feet wide. We'll have a multi-lane roundabout at the, the new intersection at Trinity Station Way, and that'll be serving the future uh, TRE station. 116. There will also be a signal replacement at Salado Trail. There's an existing signal there now. We're just going to replace that one. See, I'm not getting video. Please mute yourself if you're able to. We're also installing a signalized pedestrian crossing at the new Gifford Hill, which is just west of the existing Gifford Hill. We'll be putting in a 36 inch water line and an internalized storm drain system to replace those uh, roadside ditches. There will also be new street lighting as well as, as well as trail lighting to increase visibility. 
and we'll have enhanced landscaping throughout the corridor um, within the planting strip, within the medians, as well as the central island of the roundabout. And I do want to mention one more thing, just because we've been getting a lot of questions about it. The project will make sure to have enough budget to restore any damaged landscaping, irrigation, or screen walls during construction. Those are items outside of our scope, but we'll ensure that during construction, if those items are damaged, that there's enough budget to get them replaced. And this is kind of what it what you can expect to for the street to look like at the end. So this is an overview of the project. As I mentioned, it starts at in a state 820. We have the roundabout here um, that'll be serving the new Trinity Lakes TRE station. And it goes down to Salado Trail with our transition ending just east of the intersection. I'm going to come in Salado Trail, huh? The, pr the proposed roadway sections show um, two 11 foot lanes in each direction. Here and here. Uh, with a 28 foot median dividing the road. We also have a, a 10 to 12 foot multi use trail or sidewalk on both sides of the roadway. Um, and then that's separated from the street by a strip of parkway, which will also be landscaped. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest goals for this project is to allevi alleviate the frequent flooding um, that occurs in the area. So this is a, uh, this is a map of the floodplain showing existing conditions uh, based on the 100 year storm. As you can see, a lot of Trinity Boulevard is underwater during a storm, even if you live in this area of minimal flood hazard, if you're having to drive down Trinity Boulevard, um, you're driving through flood water. So we're aiming to raise the road out of the floodplain in order to address that flooding issue. Another important aspect of the project. the project. Can you please mute yourself me? so that there's no echo? Uh, another important aspect of the project is the roundabout near the future TRE station. So the roundabout is a two lane hybrid roundabout uh, with enhanced landscaping in the central island and uh, pedestrian activated flashing beacons at all of the crosswalks. This will make the intersection safer for pedestrians and motors alike. Some of the benefits of having a roundabout installed are increased pedestrian safety due to those slower vehicle speeds and shorter crossing distances for pedestrians. Um, there are lower average delays during non-peak hours. During peak hours, they're similar to what you see right now. There are also fewer crashes, and when there are crashes that occur, they're a lot less severe than on a normal traditional roadway with signals. Um, so in general, the decreased speeds work better with future developments to encourage pedestrian traffic. And the city has a great uh, web page that contains a lot of useful information on how roundabouts work and why they're a safer option for a lot of intersections. And that's listed for you here on the slide. So I encourage everybody to go and check that out. So some of the enhanced pedestrian facilities that are included in the project are the um, 
rectangular rapid flashing beacons at the roundabout. Um, the flashing beacons will signal drivers within the roundabout to yield to any crossing pedestrians. Uh, we'll also have a pedestrian hybrid beacon at the mid block crossing near Gifford Hill. And finally, there will be a 10 to 12 foot wide shared use path. So the landscaping features that are included in the project or included in within the roundabout, you can expect to look similar to what is shown on this slide. All of these plants uh, are native Texas plants and be and they'll be planted within the central island of the roundabout. So a future phase is planned for uh, this area. Um, the improvements will run from Salado Trail to uh, Thames Trail, connecting the recent precinct line road uh, reconstruction. So the future phase is contingent on the voters' approval of the 2022 bond program uh, with construction estimated to start around fall 2022. And one of the driving factors behind our roadway improvements is the upcoming construction of Trinity Lakes development, including the TRE station and the mixed use development of uh, vacant land, which is shown here. This is our, our project and this is some of the development that's going on around it. So what we're currently working on, um, we're in 90%, we just completed 90% design. We're aiming to complete final design at the end of April. Uh, we're currently working on right-of-way acquisition, acquiring the um, right-of-way and easements from River, River Bend Investments, and this is for the roundabout. We're also coordinating with the franchise utilities on any relocations that may need to occur prior to construction. Um, and that coordination is happening with AT&T, Encore, and other gas companies. So the overall project schedule, as I mentioned, uh, we're, we just finished up 90% design, working towards final design. Uh, we're currently working on right-of-way acquisition. We have a, um, we'll be having a pre-construction public meeting after the contractor, you know, is, um, is hired. And that'll happen sometime around summer 2021. Uh, during this meeting, during the pre-construction public meeting, the contractor will be present. Um, so that's also a really important meeting to attend and you'll be able to ask any questions in regards to uh, construction phasing and construction impact. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And we have an estimated start of construction uh, around fall of 2021 with completion during summer of 2023. As for phase two, as I mentioned, it's subject to voters approval, but um, we're looking to complete design and construct as part of the proposed 2022 bond program. And we're looking to start construction on that in fall of 2022. And that's it for my presentation. We can now move on to the question and answer session. Hi, I'm hey, good by phone. Uh, hey, good morning. This is Tim. Can phone. you hear me? I said, I'm Sorry, there's a few phone. people talking. Yes, I'm listening by phone. And you said earlier that this, this presentation will be made available so I can view it later. Where would I be able to find a presentation? 
Yes, um, so this presentation is actually being recorded and it'll be available on YouTube. So once it's uploaded, um, you know, I'll have the link to share with whoever needs it. Okay, thank you. And can, you is, can you make crazy, sure Tanya has it, the president? Can you make sure the president has it that way? She'll have access to it too to share. Yes, yes, we can do that. Hey, good morning, Rona. Uh, my name is Chandan Raj Purohit, and I live in the community on Whistling Dog Drive, which is, you know, on the site of South of Trinity Boulevard. What are the plans for the old squall and the river um, lakes drive? Because those two um, lanes, when we turn left going westbound on Trinity Boulevard, those are very, very dangerous. And, and every time I take a turn or anybody who lives in the community takes a turn on the left, um, you know, that's that put them on the risk. And if you I don't know if you guys have looked at the accident records for last couple of years, um, I personally have seen at least four or five accidents in last year myself personally. So, you know, what are the plans? Are you planning on, you know, having a, a dedicated turn lanes or a signal? Because if you look at these three streets, they are very close to each other and they absolutely have no lights at all on either of these um, streets and it's really, really dangerous for us. Thank you for that question. Um, so there will be turn pockets wherever we have um, turns necessary into side streets. There will also be illumination that will hopefully increase visibility throughout the corridor. So not just, um, you know, pedestrian lighting, but also street lighting. So that will help with visibility. Um, Trenton, did you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think what you said is really helpful. The, there will be added illumination, like you said, and then um, I'm trying to pull up to check if we actually have a median opening there or, since it's so, so close to that signal. Um, it's loading right now, sorry. No worries. Right at Old Squall, since it is so close to Salado Trail, um, you won't be able to make a left turn to go westbound since it's a divided roadway. So you'll only be able to take a right. Um, so that'll concentrate those lefts at River Lakes Drive, which is just west of there. And then with the grades um, of the roadway being raised, that'll make it a little bit easier. And Ronak, I guess if you could scroll to slide the slide with the overall layout. Yeah. With the ways to kind of elevate those um, residents, um, that'll be an easier um, easier way to access and get onto Trinity Boulevard as well. And that's a little bit small. I don't know if you could zoom in maybe on the bottom viewport. <clears throat> and then it looks like a few questions have popped in on the chat. Um, Ronak, do you want help running through those? Yeah. Let me open those up. I, I can read those, Ronak. This is Raul. Okay. Good morning. Um, so the question is, will there be new irrigation installed which uses city water to water all the new green space? Also, who will be responsible for landscaping the new green space? So there will be, Trent, there will be irrigation. Yeah, we're planting trees and some other things. So there will be irrigation yeah. um, for the city. Mm -hmm. for the the city will provide that landscaping. Yep. And, and then, now the maintenance, and as I understand it, is going to be. Maintenance, sorry, I think we have a delay Raul. Um, the maintenance Go ahead, is plan the maintenance is planned to be um, adopted and taken over by um, Riverbend Investments, and but the contractor will be responsible for installing all of the irrigation and also repairing any damage to the adjacent irrigation that's um, owned by the HOAs or the adjacent landowners. 
So is there any way to get that added to the scope so that the project can't officially be closed until all of that has been repaired or addressed? It will be part of the scope. So you're correct. It won't be, the project won't be able to be closed unless all of the irrigation and landscaping is completed. Okay, and then like all of the reparations, because obviously uh, Renak said that there was budget available, but it wasn't concluded in the scope. I just want to make sure that all of those repairs and mm -hmm. everything is closed. Right, so I think she meant meant by... Go ahead, Renak. Oh, yeah, what I meant by that was it was, it's not the intent of the project, so we're not, the contractor will do everything in their capacity to avoid damage to those areas, mm -hmm. but there will be budget within the project and it will be resolved, you know, during the course of construction if, you know, if there is damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. I, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's addressed so the project can't be closed if that's still outstanding. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, the developer for a number of years has stated that once Trinity is improved, raised the, the current project, that he would complete the houses along Trinity and his original plan showed an access road from either off of Sand Hill Crane or off of Snow Egret to Trinity. I don't see that on your project there. It, it is in there. If um, Renox is able to yeah. zoom in to the bottom right of the top viewport. Um, okay. So the developer obviously isn't um, required to develop those lots, but um, as part of the project, um, we are filling in adjacent to those lots and providing that access that is near Renox cursor if you go down a little bit. Okay. Um, so, so instead of having two two ways to access lakes of river trails west there will be three ways to access is that correct yes that is correct perfect and the last question is there's been some different information about access to trinity trails from um, the current little creek or sluice that runs behind the houses on sand hill crane what is the status of the Trinity Trails and access uh, during the area that's along the gas pipeline running along, that's from north to south, mm -hmm. along the sluice, or what we call it, or the creek, the Trinity Trails? Renat, can you go to slide six or slide five? Yes, so you're talking about um, from the word Trinity Boulevard and then going southeast behind those residents? Yes. And we're not, I don't know if I'm able to trace that with my cursor, but. Um, you can see is... the lake there in the bottom right on my screen, it's the bottom right. You can see the lake that backs mm -hmm. up. And then we were told um, there's been conflicting <laughs> information. There will be a trail connection from Trinity Boulevard along the back of those houses, all the way out to the Trinity Trail, which you see at the bottom right. Mm -hmm. Where is he going? Trinity Trail, Trinity Boulevard. Where is that time we go around so, over there? So, 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 so you know, the, the, those, are, those are good questions, Mr. Lyles. Um, I want to I want to emphasize that this meeting focuses on the improvements to Trinity Boulevard by the city. Uh, those things are likely, uh, being uh, dealt by development and by the developer himself. Those are not city projects. So okay. we, we can we can chase some answers for you, but we don't have the people that are here in this meeting. We don't have that information because that's that's development. Uh, this meeting focuses on the improvements to Trinity Boulevard uh, by the city commission by the city of Fort Worth. So that those are private dollars that we're not we're not uh, privy of. But we'll chase some answers for you and provide provide an answer. Thank you. How how will that answer? Would that be emailed to me or since yeah, I if you, if you can put your email address in the chat box, we can capture that. And yeah. if you can actually, if you can kind of put a few words regarding the question, you know, uh, you know, connection of trails to the pond uh, south of Trinity 
um, lakes or river trails south, I mean west, and we'll, we'll identify the question. I'll, I'll know what the question is about, and then we'll, we'll share some answers for you. And Raul, we're taking, Thank we're you. keeping track of all the questions, so we'll have Alan's question listed there. In our Perfect. Notes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Construction. How many east and westbound lanes will you will the project maintain? There will be two lanes in each direction. There, will, I believe the plan or not is for one lane in each direction. So a two lane roadway, basically, but one lane in each direction. Sorry. You said deer. You said he said deer in construction. I believe. Yes, oh, during, during construction. construction. Sorry, I missed that part. Right. During the construction period, there'll be uh, a reduced amount of lanes, both east and westbound, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I have a lot of questions coming in um, on the chat box, so I'm going to try to get through some of those before I take any other verbal questions. Um, let's see, somebody's asking where the roundabout is located. Um, so the roundabout, if you can see my slide here, is at Trinity Station Way and Tr Trinity Boulevard. So just east of the Interstate 820. So it's, it's where that circle is shown on the slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then somebody asked, where is Gifford Hill? Gifford Hill is, uh, let's see. Is this where we parked last time, Trent? I believe. It and should I be right in front of the small lake. So, yeah, okay, please. this is where we parked. So mm -hmm. Gifford Hill is in this area, but it's basically moving west yes so the new gifford hill will be just west of where the existing gifford hill is and i believe we're still working to finalize all the all the names for the side street so we apologize in advance if some of the naming um, changes but renak is correct there will be a side street um near the gas pad that's where the php which is the pedestrian hybrid beacon um will be located, which allows for safer pedestrian crossing of Trinity. And I have another question asking, how does phase one construction overlap with Trinity train station? Um, are you asking whether the construction of those two will overlap? If yeah, so well, we have. Yeah, that's that's correct. I'm I'm wondering, you know, at the same time you're tearing up the streets for Trinity, will they be over there um, also bringing in construction trucks uh, to take care of the rail station? I believe that is the, that it will be the case. I'm not right now. I'm not certain as to when the train station will start construction, but it'll be within the period where about Trinity is under construction. One of the reasons why we're addressing Trinity is because the train station is coming up. I just, I want to make sure that both projects are working together to what 1 group of people may be tearing up the, the street and then you have to go repair it or you tear it up and they got to go repair it. So at the end of the day, the, the our neighborhoods are the ones that are going to have to try to drive through all that. Yeah, we, we will make sure we coordinate with, uh, you know, with that other project and also we won't be accepting Trinity Boulevard from our contractor until the road is in standard and acceptable conditions. We'll address, we'll address any issues before we accept the project and let the contractor off. Do you hey, think we'll be going back through the roundabout? We get a lot of 18 wheelers that come down Trinity and uh, or try to access the uh, gas. I don't know what that is, uh, the gas line and um, a lot of the developer, uh, they have trucks in there. So will the 18 wheelers also be able to make it through that roundabout? 
The roundabout is designed so the 18 wheelers will be able to maneuver through the roundabout, um, utilizing the truck apron if necessary, which is the portion towards the inside that is raised. Um, however, with the 11 foot lanes and the slower speeds um, through this section of Trinity, we're anticipating that truck traffic will find it um, better route, you know, utilizing Highway 10 if possible, or I think Randall Mill is the street to the south. So although we're not currently proposing, you know, any no trucks, no through truck signs, um, I think the context of the roadway um, may find it difficult for a regular route. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ronak, the next question is, uh, what is the target speed limit for Trinity? The target what? I'm sorry. Uh, speed limit. And I believe that's 40, 40 miles per hour. Trent, can you confirm? Yeah, it's, it's currently 40 miles an hour. Um, we're coordinating with the City of Fort Worth Transportation Management. I believe our goal is to actually post the speeds um, around the roundabout at 30 miles an hour. And then as you get further east, I believe our goal is to post it at 35, but once again, we're still coordinating and finalizing that um, we're able to lower those speeds. Um, it, I don't think it's just as simple as posting the speed signs that you have to coordinate with different departments throughout City of Fort Worth. Okay, I have another question stating, uh, will the project be set in the existing road footprint only or are the are there plans to take space from homeowners? Um, there are no plans to take space from homeowners. <clears throat> We're not widening any roads. Um, the only right of way acquisition that is happening is for the roundabout. And that's from River Riverbend Investments, so not from any homeowners. Um, Will the road between lakes of river trails and 820 always remain open? Which what was the roads? I meant during, constru during construction. River lakes and what was the other road? Um, 820, Interstate 820. Oh, okay. Um, I think our goal is to maintain um, two points of access to the neighborhoods during construction, but with having to raise the road, you know, between five to eight feet, it, it is going to be a challenge, um, but obviously we'll always have at least one point of access, but we are being as strategic as possible to have two points of access at all times. Okay. I hope that answers the question. I'm not sure. Do we have a scheduled start date for Trinity Town Center development to break ground? Um, I'm not sure what their construction schedule looks like. Uh, I think Raul mentioned that, you know, there's going to have to be some coordination happening, uh, but we can try to get you that information. Um, and that is from Keith Short. So Keith Short, if you can um, put your question down with your contact information, we can get back to you with that information. And we'll be able to send out the meeting notes to, um, you know, the HOA presidents as well, just so that we have answers to the questions that can be distributed. Yeah, that would be good. Do you have a different list of questions or not? You're reading I some do. that I don't they see in the in, chat. They came in privately, so I, oh, I'm just reading okay. the ones that <laughs> came in privately. Um, there's, a, there's a long list, so I'm trying to make my way through them. Um, let's see. Will city water be used for irrigation, or will LORT North still pay the electric bill to irrigate the entire enhanced green space? Um, 
Frank, can you clarify that? I'm not 100% sure where the uh, irrigation connections are being made. Do you know? Um, actually, no. I think, is David Gregory on? I think we discussed this with him recently and he was able to give a better answer. Let's see if he's on. Because I, I believe since um, Riverbend Investments is maintaining the landscaping, the irrigation is actually being set up to be fed from one of the adjacent lakes or ponds. And um, well, it's currently being fed by the the lakes and ponds that are there, and the HOAs actually pay for that irrigation. So it sounded like the city was doing the irrigation. You were doing setting up your own irrigation. I guess we misunderstood. No, I think so, I spoke earlier, um, and I believe what you stated is correct, that um, the the lakes will be providing the irrigation. So if the lakes are providing the irrigation, you're fixing what is broken. It sounds like the HOAs will still need to cover the expenses for the irrigation that's being uh, done on those, uh, um, the landscape areas. The city's not uh, right. The the landscaped areas along the roadway. Yeah, currently we pay for the electricity and for the air, the the watering of the irrigation and the fixing. But it sounds like we're expected to also pick it up once you fix everything and redesign everything. You are the city is not doing. That. I, I believe that is correct. This is the landscape is going to be privately maintained. The city is not maintaining the landscape. Okay. That's when true. I say maintenance, I mean trimming, fertilizing, watering, repairs, everything. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I believe this. Sorry, guys, really quick, because um, ultimately, one, our current irrigation system from the north doesn't have the power to take on any more irrigation. But part two, with that now becoming higher trafficked area and encouraging people who aren't in our HOA to go through those areas. I believe part of this project should be that the HOAs no longer maintain the areas outside their walls. And I don't, I don't believe the plan is for the HOAs to maintain those areas, Raul. I, I believe the uh, Ken Newell is planning to maintain those areas along Trinity Boulevard. So we asked that. So that question is there. Uh, if you guys could have Ken, I know he's on. Clarify that because ultimately the way that our bylaws were written. It would be, it would go back on the HOAs. Yeah, so, so we'll confirm and clarify that question. Yeah, my understanding, my understanding was that uh, Mr. Newell, that's, that's what I've been communicated to us in all the meetings that Mr. Newell would be maintaining. It. I don't know what entity of Mr. Newell's, you know, uh, portfolio of entities would be maintaining. And I just assumed that it would be the HOA, but uh, we'll confirm that and, and provide clarification. Okay, I'm going to move on to some of the other questions. Um, are lane cl closures anticipated? Yes, as you mentioned during construction, there will be one lane open in each direction. Uh, let's see. How high are the streets being raised for the homes that back up to Trinity? Will we be able to see traffic from the back wall? Um, so the road is being raised about five to eight feet. It differs depending on where your home is, how much is being raised near you. Uh, will we be able to see traffic from the back wall? Um, I mean, not unless you look over your your fence, because I'm assuming the screen walls are going to be um, raised once we raise the road with the regrading of the backyard. So, yeah, to expand on that a little bit, um, the there is there is a portion of the homes along the north side of the road that. Um, the backyards will need to be adjusted, which is 
um, being coordinated outside of this project, but obviously in close coordination with this project. So the city of Fort Worth is coordinating with Ken Newell to ensure, um, figure out how and when exactly that's gonna happen. The plan is for that to happen before, um, like this summer as construction begins or before construction begins. Um, so obviously that coordination is going to start very soon and um, all the homeowners along that trips that are affected will be contacted directly. And when if those backyards are needing to be raised along the north side, those will be extended to make sure that you have the minimum height needed on your screening wall. But the, the south side of the road, the houses um, will not need to be adjusted and the screening walls won't be touched. So <clears throat> I have a question about what you just said, and thank you for those words, but wh where, where will that be in writing? Where will that be described that that's the, that's going to happen? In writing, um, so, so we're, you... we're still coordinating that with, uh, you know, Mr. Newer and River, River, River Bend investments. Um, it, I, I, I'm, It'll be forthcoming. I don't know if Mr. Newell's in the in the uh, in attendance that he can maybe he can um, provide some clarity on that. But I I'm going to assume there there will be some something in writing with every single property owner. And will Trinity Boulevard be extended up to the edge of the the wall for the folks um, on the south there along um, Snow Egret? How far will it be from the wall that's currently standing there now? The wall on the south. Are you saying the, home, the homes on Snow Egret, that's mm -hmm. on the south, that overlook Trinity? There's a distance between Trinity and that current wall, retaining wall. How close will the the um, Trinity be to that retaining wall? It's Ronak. Can you show that cross section again? It's approximately the same distance that it is now. I'm looking at the exhibit we have, and it's hard to exactly see where the edge of the lane is. But as far as I can tell, the edge of the roadway is not getting any closer to the houses on the south side. There's some structural problems with that wall over on along the, the homes that um, on the south side where the wall is cracking mm -hmm. or. Uh, is no longer structurally sound. Who's responsible for fixing that? Will this project take care of that? Right. So this project will eliminate the need for that wall. Um, since we okay. are going to be filling in, we'll be filling in um, the height of that wall that you're speaking of to the bottom of the screening fence. And so when you have fill on both sides of that, that wall, there won't be any need to repair the current wall as it, it won't function as a wall anymore. Thank you. Okay. Uh, will this project address a better warning or visual for those going westbound to see the stoplight at Trinity and Salado? Um, many people run the red light here and it's very difficult to see. Um, so there was a casualty apparently on Super Bowl Sunday by a red light runner when they were turning from Salado. That would, those improvements would be part of the second phase, I believe. Uh, Trenton, are you aware of any, any improvements to the area that'll increase uh, yeah. site distance? Could you remind, could you repeat the issue that happened? The site yeah, distance so going westbound? Yeah, it's westbound on Trinity Boulevard so that they can see the stoplight at Trinity and Salado. Okay. Um, so we are raising the intersection slightly, so that should help that sight distance. And um, with the replace signal, there will be new fixtures. And I believe as they are always progressing, those um, signal technology LEDs are um, better easily visible from a distance. Um, the first room doesn't the only, need no one. The only other improvements um, to that besides the upgraded signal technology um, are, 
are the dedicated left turn pockets that will actually be offset um, so that um, as you're turning left, you're able to see that oncoming traffic easier than you currently can, um, or that you would you would be able to in um, most signals because um, they'll be closer to that oncoming traffic so you can see it. Robin, this is Councilwoman Gina Bivens. I'd like to make some type of statement. Uh, I'm getting texts from several homeowners. I don't want people leaving the meeting thinking that there is no way to put all of these questions and responses together. So I want to make sure staff is prepared to not only provide this recorded meeting and the video, but also some form of report that you can provide to the president, you know, for the board and the members so that they'll have answers because we're getting answers on, on various topics. And I don't want people leaving not knowing that they're going to get firm responses. So can you guys agree to, to make sure that happens? Absolutely, Council Member Bivens. We'll we'll put a report and we'll we'll distribute uh, answers to all those questions. And and if there are questions that people have that they didn't think of during the meeting, they should be able to send those to Robin as well. Is that correct? To Ronak, that's correct. Okay. They can and, and you and and for the homeowners, you can always copy me and Sandy on anything you ask, and we'll make sure to get get a question for you. But that's just what I wanted to add because I'm hearing a lot of questions. And I don't want people wondering, well, how are we going to get the firm answer? So we'll get that written report. And that's all I have to say. I'll go back on mute. Thank you very much. Yes, I, like when I said at the be beginning of the, the uh, meeting, her contact information is going to be in the meeting. And the meeting will also be posted in the city's website project site. And she'll be able to send you a link um, to that as soon as we have it uh, posted. Yes. Great. And I'll save all of the private um questions i'm receiving as well Ronak, maybe you could um, go to the slide with your contact information one more time just so everyone has a chance yes. to drop that down so this is my email address as well as my cell phone number feel free to email me or call me with any questions that you may have mm -hmm. and most people have my direct email address as well as sandy's if not, you know, the, the president and Jackie can provide it. But, you know, we just want people to feel at ease and informed. Hey, Renak, this is Jeff. Could you go ahead and um, we have a lot of people that have called in. Um, could you go ahead and spell out your email address just to make sure, sure. everyone that's on the phone can hear? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so my email address is R O N as in Nancy A K dot r e k a n as a nancy i at fort worth texas dot gov so once again that's r o n a k dot r e k a n i at fort worth texas dot gov and my cell number is six eight two three zero one two zero three four six eight two three zero one Two zero three four. Is there right. somewhere we can once over? Yes, I'll be able to email it to you. Um, if you just either leave me your email in the chat box or uh, send me an email. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's go back to the questions. Is there a term pocket at Trinity Lakes Drive? Did we already answer that? I know there was a question about a term pocket. I can't remember if it was that same street. Uh, we were talking about um, Salado, I believe, last time. So there will be turn pockets and a median opening at River Lakes and Trinity Lakes. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Can I ask a question? Sure. I had difficulty getting on, and I heard this just in passing. 
There will be no left-hand turn from Salado on to Trinity. Uh, there will be left-hand turns from Salado on to Trinity. Um, there, the old Squall Drive, which is just west of Salado, those left-hand turns won't um, be allowed after construction. Okay, there will but not we be a can, make, can make a left-hand turn from Salado. Certainly, yes. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, um, there's another question. We live at the southwest corner of Trinity Boulevard and Salado Trail. How will our property be impacted by this project? So southwest on the southern side of Trinity Boulevard. So let me bring up the map. The footprint is not anticipated to impact um, your property within your right of way at all. Um, and I, I think I have that address, 2981 Salado. The, the, there will be a very small portion of your sidewalk um, on closer to Trinity Boulevard that we're planning to replace and possibly a little bit of curb um, to make sure when we are reconstructing that intersection that all the sidewalk and ADA ramps are compliant, but we're not planning to replace your driveway or um, impact any anything on your property. Okay. Hello, Greg. Thank so you. what are the, the plans for the land south of the roundabout? Good question. And if you go to the slide with the Trinity Lakes. Um, oh, that's, that's there's, uh, there's support, I think there's some trash over there. Can everyone please that. mute so, mute themselves? Are we gonna do a part <laughs> Jeff, are you able to mute? Right. Okay. So there's. Commercial land mixed use development on the north and south side of Trinity Boulevard towards 820 being planned. Um, I know those plans are still developing, so we can't speak and we don't know honestly exactly um, what um, developments are coming in and being designed. Um, but I do know there's commercial and mixed use on the north side and south side. So the roundabout will connect to that as well as the. Um, roadways to the, the, the west and east, I think if I have their names up. They're, they'll also connect to the rail station. I believe it's Conductor Road and Rotary, but not sure. Yes. Ronak, do you still have a list of questions? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where I last left off. Um, <laughs> let's see. On the map you're showing now, where will the new TRE station be? So that's here. And this is our project. Okay, so real quick, I'm sorry, I'm the one who asked that question, I'm Kendra. So it's gonna be back there further behind that smaller lake, is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. The small lake back there? So it's gonna kind of mm -hmm. butt up to 822 or kind of right under? Where's right 820? At 820th. Okay. Okay, so further back, not necessarily in someone's back. I'm, I'm further down Trinity, but I'm just thinking of the homeowners back there. It's not going to be like right in their backyard, is it? No, no. Okay, that's good. I, I just didn't know where for sure. I, it was hard for me to, I'm not real good with maps, so I was just trying to say no, thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank sure. you. Okay.
I saw one question yeah. asked about the traffic flow in the neighborhood um, south of Cherney Boulevard. Um, since Old Squall won't have the median opening. Uh, okay. um, I'm just wanted to make a note that we can take a look at that at the surface. I don't see um, any needed changes, but we can take a look since um, more traffic, I would assume, would reroute to River Lakes um, to make that left. So we'll see if there's any impacts that we can put in to make it safer. Okay, um, someone's asking when can all the retail construction begin? We were giving these plans many, many years ago. Um, I think we had mentioned that, you know, we don't have exact dates for the construction of the development happening near the project area. Um, but we can find that information out and include it in the report that we're going to send out. Mm -hmm. And I know the, the TRE station is um, starting, and I believe the developments are starting construction this summer as well. I, I don't know the exact timeline, um, but I obviously the station and the roadway are going to be a catalyst for the development to get going. So everything should be happening relatively quickly. Okay. I would like to ask a quick question, please. The slides. Hmm? I need it. I need this deck since I missed all of that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, in the entrances to um, the s neighborhood to the south, you're going to add a new entrance, correct? Um, yes, you're talking about. Yeah, right there. Will you be able to go left there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Someone's asking, so is the widening uh, just to the north. Widening, um, like to account for the median. Um, yes, it's mainly to the north. So I believe the roadway currently is situated a little further south um, than the center line of the road. Sorry, Trenton, I, I can't hear you quite well. Did you say something? Um, I think my internet's struggling. I'm getting messages saying it is. Oh. Can you hear me better? <laughs> is, it, is it getting better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there will be turn link pockets um, to turn on to River Lakes. If you're going westbound or eastbound, they will, there will be for both directions as well as Trinity Lakes, as well as Salado. Okay. Um, there's a question regarding, um, so they're asking, is anyone representing Newell development on the call? Can they address why the development promised for 20 years hasn't started and what we can expect now? The TRE station wasn't planned, development was planned. Not, I don't, Raul may speak to that. I don't know that this is the. No, I, I don't believe that's, that's for the city to answer that question. Those are private development questions and um, we'll, we'll, we'll provide, you know, uh, Reverse investments informa information for you to contact them, but that's those are not questions that we can answer. I apologize. Mm -hmm. This is this is Ken Newell. I'm hearing the questions, trying to um, stay focused on the Trinity Boulevard 
uh, project, project at hand, I would be glad to meet with any of the um, the um, HOA associations, um, their their leadership, or in a general meeting, I could answer most of the questions I'm hearing, um, and I'd be glad to just try this time to to keep it to the project at hand. Appreciate it, Mr. Newman. Okay. Uh, let's see. Will a recording of this meeting be available? Yes, it will be put on YouTube and I'll be able to send the link out to the HOE president so that everybody has has that available. Um, I think I covered all of the chat box questions. If I didn't, please let me know. Um, or if anybody has any other questions that they want to ask, please go ahead. Hey, Renak, this is Jeff. I have a few that came in privately to me as well. Um, I think oh. we've covered a lot of them, but I'll run through them. Uh, just as a follow up to the recording, uh, this project does have a, a project page on the city's website. So the, the recording will be linked directly to that page as well. Uh, plus, that's where we'll be doing kind of regular updates on status updates on the project once we move into construction. So I highly rec recommend that everyone uh, bookmark that page. Um, you can find it easily enough by just searching Trinity Boulevard um, when you get to the FortWorthTexas.gov website. Uh, but for questions, um, one was who's the manager of Riverbend? It's uh, state investments. I think we've already covered that one. Um, is the roundabout intended to be the intersection connecting to Trinity Lake Station because it looks further east on our map uh, than on the TRE plan? Can we do we know a little detail on that? Yeah. Right. Back to the road to the roundabout that will. Well, that will be the um, first connection, but both both inter both um, the roundabout and conductor road will connect to the station ultimately. Can I ask a question? Please. Uh, so, th this is Tanya. It's actually for Ken since Ken's out there. Uh, Ken, I'm continuing to get text messages about the maintenance outside the walls, which is in relation to the Trinity Boulevard project. Realizing won't be done until 2023, it looks like phase one. We just want to be sure that the HOAs aren't going to be expected to maintain outside the walls, given that area is being uh, redeveloped, if you will, to encourage public traffic. That's that's correct, Tanya. Um, Thank you. I got a few more questions. How many houses um, in the north will be impacted by the road being raised? You mentioned the wall and the land impact. Can you provide more details? The the general stretch is from Trinity Lakes um, to River Lakes that we're looking at needing to um, modify the, the backyard slightly. What was the second portion of the question? Um, she asked, you mentioned the wall and the land impact. Can you provide more detail? Um, is that for the north side or south side? I'm assuming it's for the north side. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the about the about land impacts. Um, I mean, you could consider it a, you know, a, in general, uh, in every house will be a little bit different, but a re regrading, a leveling of the backyard. Um, but obviously, there will be no expenses on the homeowner. Everything will be incorporated into the adjustments. Um, and so any any decorative landscaping or patios, sheds, anything like that will be will 
be adjusted or re modified, replaced um, with no cost for the homeowner. But the south side, um, when shouldn't expect any adjustments. Okay, someone's asking about the new, will the new concrete roadway be able to accommodate the large amount of heavy truck traffic? The current level of truck traffic causes degradation. Yep, so the post section, um, I believe it's 10 inch concrete, which um, has been designed by a geotechnical engineer who um, not only analyzes the soils underneath the roadway, but also models and predicts the amount of truck traffic um, to design that. So short answer is yes, uh, long answer was the previous statement. Jeff, did you get any other questions to you privately? Uh, I'm looking through now. Um, a lot of the private questions we had already answered. Uh, so I okay. didn't read through them. Uh, Renat, can I just... Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say, I just posted the link to the uh, project web page in the city of Fort Worth site. So anyone that's interesting can copy and then go to that project website um, anytime and check for updates and you know, information. And also this meeting, uh, this meeting recording will be posted on that site. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions coming in. Um, as was mentioned earlier, you know, we'll put a response, we'll put our responses together um, in a type of report and we'll be able to send it out to the HOA to disperse to the property owners um, so that you all have the information you need from this uh, presentation. And once again, the presentation will be available for you to uh, look at later on or to reference later on. Um, and with that, I wanna thank everybody for joining us on this Saturday morning. We are excited to get going on this project and uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me personally with any other questions that you may have. Thanks everyone. Perfect. One last yes, thing, do we have the contact information for the HOA president? I do, yeah, it came in through a, a, a message. Yeah. Okay. Well, on the west side, I do, I think they said I'm the HOA president for the west side. Right, I think the, there's, the HOAs are separate for the, well, I think what we're calling the north and south side of Trinity. Um, but we can, We'll be distributing it to all the HOA presidents, so they should be able to get in contact with their respective areas. Okay, so so we do have all their email addresses, contact information of the presidents. Yes. Uh, so this is Tanya. I serve as the president on the master board. Our entire master board is here, so all four sub areas of our HOA are being represented on the call. Okay. okay, thank you. And I know Brad Lomberger um, coordinates with you all frequently, so he helps us um, make sure we have all updated contact for the Northwest and River Trails areas. So um, we should be able to get all of the relevant materials and information back to you all pretty easily. Perfect. And for any reason, you know, if someone doesn't get it, please contact Renee. Yeah. All right. Everyone have a good rest of their Saturdays. Please reach out if you need to. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, Renee. Thank, Thank you. you.